Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, Derek Carr, Thursday Night Football, tough L, tough performance, both for the quarterback, in my opinion, and the entire offensive unit. We are breaking it down. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> So before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So if you enjoy the way that I talk and teach ball, you want even more Quarterback School content, usually long format videos over there trying to create the environment of exactly what it's like in an NFL quarterback room. So all sorts of nuance, depth, detail about not only the quarterback position, but offensive and defensive football at a high level. So if you're interested in that, hop over to the Quarterback School Patreon community, join. The link is in the video description. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. All right, we're really doing it. Derek Carr, the fade fest right out the gate, hitting the back of our head. This is a tough one for me. There's a lot of tough ones for me in this one. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> right here, you can see Carr. Hey, he's pointing to the back. Say, hey, you got to the right. Go over there and block him. Well, that means that I'm going to be hot to the left. Dog, you're too old to be missing plays like this. This can't happen to a veteran guy. Getting hit in the back of the head after we reset the protection. So what's going on here? The offensive line is going to slide to their left. So these three are going to slide to these three. Okay, The two guys up top are going to be here and here. The back then, it looks like Carr is telling him he's going here one. Okay, so when this guy blitzes here, the back's got to go block him, which he does. That then makes this guy the quarterbacks. So he is hot. Okay, so we, we don't look this way. The guy he probably would throw to is standing by himself clapping, going crazy, which is a different conversation for maybe later in this video. But it's all bad. Y'all, this is bad ball in the preseason, let alone bad ball week seven. Veteran quarterback. What's he looking at? Look at him clapping down here. It's it's embarrassing, if I'm being honest. It's embarrassing film. Where's he even throwing this? Not to the hybrid guy, I hope, in the slot. Hell no. <laughs> the guy down here. Throw it to 13. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Just really, really like gut-wrenching, stomach ache football. Oh, and of course, you know we're going to be up on our toes. Whee oh, boom. Bad ball. Okay, this is one of the things that I normally do for the more quarterback Patreon-centric videos, the longer format videos, but I like to watch people in the crowd, people on the sideline. We're going to roll with this guy right here at this game. Okay, you might say, how the hell are we going to possibly see him? Well, these guys are going to clear out of here. We're going to call this Gold Joe Horn. And we're just going to roll with his Surrender Cobra experience over the course of this game. Because there's some bad, bad ball going on here. And we are going to suffer through it together with my guy, Gold Joe. So right here, this is a play a lot of teams run. Olave at the bottom is the number one. He gets ass knocked down. The over is number two. The backside in is number three. We go never in history ball with a ball probably a yard too high, and it's no touchdown. So to me here, there's just so many layers of bad. The ass knockdown right here, not throwing it to the back line. You see number two in the top right? He's got his back turned. Just throw it to the number three guy right there. Just throw it. He's, he's open. That's open in the NFL. Instead, we bail. Still open on the back line, still open. Then we throw it, and it's going to go in the front row. Now, the guy makes a hell of a catch. It's just out of bounds. Be a sweet play in the CFL. So, this play, really popular in the league. I think there's a lot to like about it. Like the design. I want to make sure I mention the ones that I like. So, this little like slant and then out play. Okay, a little whatever you want to call it whip, arrow, return, don't care. Well, if that's number one, Okay, and that's number one. Number two is going to be the over, like race to the back pylon. That's number two. Then the number three here is going to be in motion. 
So he's a guy in motion. He's going to run that back line. That's number three. Great. Easy to see. Well, the first thing that goes sideways is right here. We're going to knock this guy down with our ass. Bad. Unfortunate. Probably not great football. Number two is not there. Number three, the DB type right here. He's going to turn his back. He's got his back turned. He is facing the end line. Just throw it. It's open. That's open in the NFL. It might not be open to you on Thanksgiving, but it's open. We got to throw that ball. So, unfortunate down here at the bottom to get blocked out. Dunk. Okay. LOL. Got to get stronger, bigger, faster, stronger. Okay. The over, not there. The back line in, double mailbox. Double mailbox. Throw it. Right there. Throw it. Throw it. Throw it. We don't have to bail. They're in drop eight. They're in drop eight. Just stay in the pocket. Just throw it. It's open. The guy's got his back turned. Instead, we have to go create, do something that we're not, and then we miss a touchdown. And it just, you know, it continues to just feel like, golly, what is happening? No, no, don't go anywhere. Where are you going? Drop eight. Have some patience. Just throw it. That is open. Throw high back five right at that back judge, right at the pillars, right at his face. That's a touchdown. Set your feet. Throw a touchdown there. Good, good night. Next one here. This is a nice one. Threw a couple nice corners down here to the bottom. The guy in motion is going to run a choice. The number one is running a seven or a corner. So we read this thing low to high, low, no, high, yes. Drive it right on him. Outstanding. This is really well done. And we're really excited for 87 that he caught this one. Okay. Again, we can empathize with him later. Right here, this is a nice job from Carr. Seeing no to the choice underneath. Yes to the corner. Again, post motion here. So move him, get him off the ball, thinking, okay, we're going to get an opportunity to get that little choice route underneath. This is where the ball ends up going, on the corner or the seven. Here is that choice, off the ball in motion. reason I say it's a choice is because he kind of slows it, and then he's going to run to get open. In, out, some teams let you get to the post. So you read this thing, one here to the choice, two to the corner. And it's just that simple. Really nice job by Carr here, trusting the pass protection, staying in there. And going one to two. No, yes. And you can see him kind of, that's not a shrug, that's a turn down. So he's like, uh, uh, got it. And the ball's outstanding, driven right up on the numbers. Really nice rep. This is well done from four and 87. Nice pass protection as well. So no to the choice. Yes to the end. But you can still see just kind of like the, the foundation of his feet, you know, Always that kind of like ballerina vibe. Bouncing around, moving to trouble, moving, moving, moving. Right here it works out. Nice strike. Next one here, fourth and two. This is going to be mesh gone wrong. Okay, certainly a turnover-worthy throw, interceptable. Lots of bad. Okay, probably a flag on 13 here, running right there into 30. But even if we... I, first of all, I don't think they operate the mesh correctly. First of all, there's just so many layers of bad. <laughs> okay, so what I, I want to talk about the layers of bad. The first part, I'll draw up the play. So in my opinion, this is mesh. First one over the top, second one over the top. Whether he's supposed to run a hook or no or not, we don't know because he gets jacked or he jacks himself. Here's where the ball ends up being thrown on the shallow. It's probably paired with the rail here from the number three or the swing. So kind of one to two is how, and most teams are trying to get this two ball. Okay, so what goes wrong here? Why are you being so negative, JT? Jeez Louise. Well, your guy, the bulldozer here, gets jacked at the line. He doesn't realize they're playing tackle football. He's the first clear. So he gets jacked right here by the edge. That's bad. So when he gets jacked, he gets super shallow. So now our mesher is running over the mesh. Okay. The next one here, the number one, he's coming across here as he runs across. He's going to full on run right into the corner. Now, I'm all about getting a rub, even an illegal pick sometimes that doesn't get called. But this is going to get called all the time. This is a car accident. So that happens. Then we're going to continue on the mesh and throw it. 
and we don't see the edge player who's standing right in the throwing lane. Like, I mean, we're looking right here. We have to be able to see that. It's just, it's three layers of bad, and they kind of get lucky that it's not, a, you know, an interception that's returned for a significant gain. So watch seven up top get jacked. jacked. Now watch the collision. Boom. Now watch us throw it right through someone's hands. I mean, this is fourth down. This is the got to have it play. That's your got to have it play execution. You can't have one of those mistakes, let alone three of those mistakes. It's just, it's sloppy. I hate the back cutting from the backfield as well. It's just so many layers of bad cars going backwards with his footwork. Oh my goodness. So this next one here is one of those examples that I think does a nice job of showcasing car playing too quickly. He is going essentially back foot, check down. And you don't see a lot of quarterbacks do this in the league. This is a fast way to piss off everybody on the perimeter to basically just reject the play and throw a check down. Now, I'm not saying it never happens, like third and forever, maybe this happens. But right here, and the way that you can tell this is because you can tell when a quarterback hits his back foot, so whatever the drop is, hits his back foot, where is the number one? There's usually a, a number one deep down the field. So we don't have to know the read to look at the play and say, this is a curl, this is a post, this is like another curl seven stop thing. So somebody here is the number one. We actually don't care who it is. But the fact that he has hit his back foot and is throwing the check down, okay, before any of these guys come out of their play, they're not close to coming out of these routes. You know, maybe you could throw the post versus middle field open. But the ball is already in the air to the check down. We're already throwing it. This is this this is the type of shit that just doesn't make sense when you turn on the film. This hurts eyes. So watch him at the top. Play fake. Back foot. Okay, where is he supposed to be looking? I don't know. Check down. That's a one hitch check down. <laughs> That's before he gets into a, a hitch, he's throwing the check down. Look at the balls in the air. Look at the receivers. They're not in the route. I mean, they haven't turned yet. Now they're turning. So either he's taking the wrong drop and it's supposed to be a seven step. Or this thing is all discombobulated. And he's just hijacking this shit and throwing check downs. But that is a fast way to piss people off. <laughs> I mean, there's no way. The thing that I always tell wide receivers is if you're mad that you're not getting the ball, watch the quarterback hit the back foot and tell me, are you open? Are you ready to be there? Especially if you're the number one guy. If you're not, we've got some issues with the design and offensive architecture. Next one here, third down, third and six. This one will make you sick. The slot to the bottom. It's a touchdown. We got to throw it. We got to throw it. I know someone's going to screenshot me this right here. Okay, don't do that. But we have to throw this ball. <laughs> Fuck, man. Come on, dog. We have to throw this ball. I know that there are people around you. I know you're not 100%. But we have to throw that ball. We cannot miss that. And that's not one of those things where like, we don't know the read. What could it be? You know, there's a bunch of different things. It's the bones of four verticals with a shallow. So what does that mean? That means that we are running what I'm going to call is a special. Who knows what they call it? Could be an over. Could be anything. Here's the seam. Here's the go. That's the bones of four verticals, three by one. I love this play with the shallow. So there it is. There are different ways to read this, in my opinion. Okay, just my opinion. Man, I like to go one to two and kind of alert this if you like it. Okay, so that's the man reads, M in black. Okay, zone, I prefer to go seam. One, if it's middle field open, you can go one to two here, down to three. But at the end of the day, this is a half field safety. This is a seam route with what I would consider your best perimeter player. This is wide ass open. Must throw. Cannot miss. Can, see, it's not like a trick em, dick em play where we're running double moves or anything. This is a clean, simple seam versus a half field safety who's wide open. Have to throw it, dog. That, that double mailbox right there, that is sickening. 
and the ball's already in the air to the check down. Just cannot happen. It will make wide receivers furious, and rightfully so. Again, he's looking check down. As soon as he, one, two, three, hitch, throw the seam. He's looking 13, check down. He never even gets to the slot. So maybe they're telling him to read it that way. And if that's that, then that's on them. But this will make you sick if you're 12 out there running with a double mailbox up for a touchdown. Next one here, fourth down, fourth and four. We're going to work the option to the back out the backfield. Nice route. Nice job staying in bounds here, getting something special down the sideline as well. You know, it's nice to have a safety blanket that can get in and create like that. I will say personally, I think 41 is a guy who really struggled in this game, both in pass protection and just maybe they're asking him to do too much. But this is what he does. So to me, this is just an option out the backfield. Whether you call it an option or a choice, it really doesn't matter. He's coming up. He can go in, out, hook up, probably hopefully go to the slant too. It's often paired. We've already seen it with that seven or corner today. But he's just going to come out here and say, hey, it doesn't matter who you put there. No backer or safety is going to be able to handle me in space. And that's exactly what happens. So just a great job here of getting to it. Carr throws a nice strike to the flat. It's a first down. Okay, you got to at least acknowledge the film is the film when there's good stuff here. Fourth and four, give one of your best players the opportunity to win in space. Like it. Nice execution. Nice little chunk down the sideline. Next one here. Another nice throw from Carr. To me, Olave down here, the number one at the bottom, running a hook. I don't think he does himself any favors with the technique that he's use, using. I know, you know he's a San Diego dude. Uh, people speak really highly of him. Never talked to him, never met him. But I can tell you that this ain't it at the top of the route. So this hook route at the top, for me, there's all sorts of bad. So the first thing here is that we're putting our landing gear down. You know, this is quarterback school, not wide receiver school, so don't freak the hell out. But as we get up here, putting the landing gear down in my lexicon is our arms come out and are wide. So we stop and our hands are out. So not only are we not going to be fast in and out of these breaks, but we're going to be leaning because we're all out of balance because we're, we're crazy wide with our hands. And then we're going to roll this thing in here and be kind of late because we're stumbling out of this thing. And I think Carr does a good job here of throwing a heater right at him. It looks like it surprises him. So it's almost like he's like chilling at the top of this thing and he's using weird slow turning technique and it's all bad and he gets a little exposed at the top. I thought he got exposed a lot of the night. That right there, both these hands out, both wide like that, like you got your hazards on. What are you doing, dog? Keep your arms pumping. Keep running back to the quarterback there and expect the ball. Expect the ball right on your face, right when you turn. That is not it. Both hands out like that, wide turn, falling. Because we're falling, our hands go down, and then we're not able to get them back up to catch the ball. That's a perfect throw. It's certainly a good enough throw. That's a tight NFL window in the red zone. I mean, it's wide open. We got to catch that. Damn. And again, it's it's... It's not one of those things where I'm, you know, necessarily like looking to assign blame. It's every clip. Someone seems like they're making big mistakes. Again, for me, I don't love this kind of footwork where we're bouncing around all over the place, moving over the guard. Okay. But right here, he lets it go on time. He throws an absolute fastball. Okay. No, I don't know if that ball gets tipped or not right there. Regardless. I mean, it goes right by his ear. Meow. Come on, 12. Next one here, 32 seconds before half. We got a big opportunity for a flag or back pylon down here to the bottom. To me, this ball has to be thrown. We hold on to it too long. We fumble, strip sack, fortunate to get it back right there. It would be another three points. But for whatever reason, we're just not seeing it. And again, I personally dislike the footwork at the top of these drops where I think it goes like backwards. See him hit his back foot right there on the line and then watch it go back. Back, back, back. Now we're holding on to the ball. Now the ball comes out. So, and I think it's even worse when you turn on the film. And again, what I would consider their best player is running a deep shot. What I'm calling this back pylon. So deep and you set it high versus a safety. 
Okay, that's not a corner, a safety type. You have to throw this ball. It's open. And when it's paired with, you know, you your backup, 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 tight end, quarterback running a sale, it doesn't make it easy. But what this corner does here, as soon as he settles at all, this ball is up. This is a go. Got to throw it. We need a big chunk right before half. Got to throw it. Have to throw it. So, I mean, just watch this thing play out to the bottom. I mean, I don't, I'm not sure exactly what this, you got to throw it, right? As soon as 31 settles right there, we got to throw it. The ball is up. The ball's up. Throw it. Just throw it as far as you can right to the front pylon. Damn. Those are big opportunities that we're getting lucky that we're getting the ball at the end of these plays. It's one thing if you're holding on to the ball and nobody's winning, you don't have any perimeter skill. They got some dudes on the perimeter. They've got guys winning. We look like we're trying to force it to the third string quarterback on a sale route when our best receiver is running a deep one, one one-on-one with the safety. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me personally, so thank you very much for doing that. I appreciate your support. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, great way to support the channel, get even more Quarterback School content. You know about it. Join, become a member. Link is in the video description. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics, RPOs, tempos, pass protection. The best-selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system and structure available for you. So if you enjoy the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the Quarterback School courses. Hop over there join and enroll. The link is in the video description. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Check those out in the video description as well. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. All right, second half. Let's keep this party going. Take a peek here. Gold Joe Horn, not there right now. Probably beveraging up. Probably a good sign for us in the second half. One of my favorite calls of every game. First call, third quarter for an offense. Let's go. Get Olave the ball up top, a little out. Again, nice job moving him. Nice anticipation. Good strike down the field, outside the numbers. This is where we got to live a little bit more. So I love the intentional design to get him the rock. Ball comes out on time, in rhythm. That's a strike of a throw. Lots to like right here. So I'll pause this thing at the top, post shift. So get him lined up. Hit your back foot, throw with anticipation. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll say A. I'm, I'm fine with that. That's a strike of a throw. Again, really nice job putting it exactly where you want. Love this call. If it wasn't there, you'd got the in on the back side. But this is a really nice job from Carr, Olave. Again, look at the speed that he's able to carve this thing up at the top. So he keeps his stride through it. Beautiful ball, nice completion to get us going. Outstanding. This is what, when you see clips like this, you wonder where the hell is the rest of this? Why isn't this baked into damn near every series? Let's get it going, find ways to get him the ball, driving it down the field on time. Next one here, your guy 4-1 down here to the bottom getting exposed. Okay, he's got a hitch. For some reason, he runs a go. Derek Carr throws a hitch, and it's all bad. Yeah, we know it's your bad. Anytime someone touches their chest like that, yeah, my bad. Save your my bads and just run the right route, please. Yeah, right there. Gotcha. Now, Haas Y Juke. I think I have a full video on this. The thing that really hurts. Okay, and I, I know I've said this a while. They, so what is Haas Y Juke? There it is. Haas Y Juke. It doesn't have to be Y either. It can just be Haas Juke. It is hitches on the outside. They convert versus certain looks. That's why sometimes they'll convert into fades. This is not one of those times. This is free access. Right, No one's there. Easy thing. Go out there. Rip a hitch versus pressure if you like it. It's paired. So that's the hitch part. Okay, the seam part is the SS for the Haas. So there's the seam. And here comes the juke over the ball. Now the thing that kills me. Okay, Not only do we run the wrong route here. But this kind of what I'm going to call antics. And if it hurts your feelings, you're probably a former wide receiver. But if you don't get the ball... Just run back to the huddle. I know it can be frustrating. I know your quarterback, 
acts a clown later, and we'll talk about. But this type of stuff on film is not for me. See him like looking around like that, like a robot? Dog, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. It's a football thing. It's a team game. Run your route. Get your ass back to the huddle. I, I'm telling you, if I had anything to do with this staff, we, this would be shown on the film. Not only are we making mistakes at running back, but we don't need this kind of like smart ass movement out there. What? I'm open. I'm open over there. Where? Why can't I get the ball? It doesn't help. It doesn't help anybody. All it does is piss people off. Okay, so just get back in the huddle and run the right route, 41. Next one here, third and 10, interception, rough. We're going to go left to right, no to the corner, no to the flat, no to the over, yes to the in. I'm going to say that there's contact there early, in my opinion, probably should be a penalty. I'm also going to say that I personally would love to see Carr go try to make a tackle. I know he's hurt. I know that probably hurts some of your brains. But to me, if you're out there to be a football player, you got to go be a football player. To you be the only guy to not show up on the screen. I mean, every offensive lineman is in the screen. Maybe they tell him not to. Maybe he's that important to them. I would want to show up on the film. He doesn't. It's a problem for me. Okay, just watch the, after he throws the interception here, throw it. Go make the tackle guy. Everybody else, people on, your, on our right, get, a, get into the screen. You're just chilling. Where are you going? You run into the restroom? Get in there. Now, maybe he's so hurt that he can't make a tackle. And if that's the case, he probably shouldn't be out there, in my opinion. Okay, Right there, you got to be a football player. People see this. The offensive line will watch this tape and be like, why is our quarterback running to the end zone? It's not for me. Okay, when you say, man, we do more car videos. I don't like doing quarterbacks that run into the end zone when they have to go make a tackle. That's just me. Maybe it's my issue, but it's my channel and you got to deal with my issues. Now, what is this play? This play looks like we're trying to get what I'm going to call a corner, a check flat, an over, and then this in on the backside. And I've already said that I think it's a penalty. It's early collision in my opinion. It's also probably not where the ball should be thrown if I had to be honest as well. To me, this second window over is there. Right there. Throw it. Just trust this guy. 13 is going to get open for you right here. There's no reason to go all the way backside. Again, just muddy decision making. You know, weird effort. You know, right there, that's open. Why are we off the over? Again, just the one hitch, corner, flat, over. It's there. Throw it. It's like we're skipping the over. That leads to crazy weird movement, leads to late down the middle. Bad things happen, especially bad when we only got 10 people tackling. Right? And again, I get it. He's hurt. He's playing though. So again, the footwork to me is always all over the place. Just watch it. Is he lined up to the left? No, he's lined up to the right. Okay. Eventually he gets to the left right there. Flat corner, no. Where's he over? He just skips it. He moves. You know, he's got 91 coming right in his face. I get it. You got to move. Then he sees that in flash. He's kind of in like a jump panic throw. Bad things happen. Nice play from 23. 23 is all over the place. He's a good football player. Be nice if we had someone running full speed to that pylon. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Probably it's just me. Next one here. First and goal from the four, we're going to run what I'm used to calling both stick. This is just phase on the outside, stick routes by the number two, and a check down over the ball. Now, they get a little fortunate right here to get a penalty. This could easily be an interception here with the ball hitting up here. Right? Boop! Who knows where that could land? We've already seen a tip ball interception. For me here, a few things. First of all, this play is not for me. But... If you want to throw more fades or have more fade opportunities, the Saints certainly haven't read about probability. So that's the first part of it. The second part here are the stick routes. Okay, I personally, once you get past JV football, don't love mirrored routes like this in the red zone. So that's the stick element. And then 
the check down element is right here. Now we know we love a good check down. Okay, it looks like car goes one, two, three, four. That's rough. That's rough. And again, I, I'm not saying that two is open on time. I'm not saying that this is I'm, none about nothing about this is good. But going one, two, three, four is not great. And it is really fortunate right here that this thing isn't an interception. Now, maybe you could hang on that stick a little bit and put it on him, but it's not open right there. Maybe on the eight, it's going to be a tight throw, but it's a tight window. You know, it's the NFL red zone. That's why you don't normally see this type of play, in my opinion. What you would do here is say you want to throw. So because he looks down here, let's assume that this was the matchup we wanted. 13 on the fade, tight end on the stick. Well, then on the back line, you have a back line, you have an in, You've got some sort of like loop return jerk. There's 8 billion different ways you can have something that can help you on the backside. You just don't see a lot of NFL teams ask their quarterback inside the five to go one, two, three, four, two and four being a stick. It just doesn't happen. It's not the kind of offense that you want to promote. I'm not saying it never happens, but it's just something you don't want to live in this world. One, two, three, four. I mean... <laughs> You want to talk about it if there was ever a guy who was made to order for like the high school seven on seven, like super jerk route where you come in here and you like, uh, 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 and then hit this thing. I mean, it's 41. Hopefully he'd run the right route, but man, that would be nice. A little creativity in this thing. What an idea. No, no, no. Ooh, oh, lucky. Next one here. There's my guy, gold Joe. Surrender Cobra in full effect. Okay, we got 11 minutes left to go, fourth quarter, and we're already in full Surrender Cobra. Now, this is the one at the bottom. This looks like it's supposed to be just a go ball, and Carr loses his mind on Olave quitting on the route, and I get it. I'm not a fan of people quitting on the route. I also admit that I am a recovering asshole for sure, and that I've had my moments of bad body language. Okay, don't get it twisted not coming from a glass house in any regard, but this kind of antics, the ones that we saw last night on the broadcast, with this type of throw, this throw is fair caught by zero over here, outside the white. That's never in history. That's not even close to, that's like debatable history. Who really discovered the new continent? I mean, what? That is a terrible ball. That's never close to thrown. And to see him just lose his mind on Olave here, I get it, man. Quitting on routes is straight up bullshit. It's bullshit. It should never be allowed. But you also have to throw it in bounds. <laughs> you can't not do your job and then get mad at someone else for not doing their job. This is never close. Never, ever close. And again, it's third down. You know, does he have the slot out? You know, maybe. Does he have something on the backside, like the backside in or post? Maybe. Or we could just chuck it out of bounds and then get mad at 12. I get it. Not excusable from 12. But losing your mind on this throw, look at that throw. There, You, you cannot catch that throw in bounds. It's not possible. I mean, the guy, look at that. It looks like a pummer turner. Damn. Next one here. Probably the best set of plays for the Saints all night. We're going to work the number two down here to the bottom on the corner. Again, that deep flag pylon with the corner. Really nice throw. Really nice catch. I mean, I still think it's funny that they asked this guy to do this, but this is a nice play from him right here. Go up and get it. Beautiful touch here from Carr as well. If I'm going to be critical of a bunch of throws, I'm also going to point out the ones that I think are of super high quality, and this is one of them. So right here, corner, paired with what I'm calling this back pylon or flag, the, similar to one, the one that he didn't throw right at the end of the second quarter. So right here, you get a flat defender who pushes out. You got to throw this thing with some really nice touch up and over. Give your guy a shot. Go make a play. Especially hurts when you're flat from the back, gets tripped, gets a little turf monster there. Boop, boop. Beautiful throw up and over. An even better catch. That's a really nice offense. Just really well do done from Carr here. Again, it's hardly been easy. 
Nothing about this night has been easy. But you got to respect this little series of three plays where he battles back, throws a touchdown pass right here up top. Not a big window to get it into 13. Again, they obviously love these fades down here. This one is a really nice job. 13 almost like slow plays this thing and like late hands it. But again, that's the matchup you like. Make it work right here. Nice job catching that thing through the ground. Again, back-to-back -back plays here. You see the one-on-one -on -one up top. When he lets this thing go right here, I mean, you know, a lot of people would throw that back shoulder. This is more down the field like tweener, and that's a hell of a catch. Again, it's almost like the corner is expecting back shoulder, and the ball just keeps going. Nice job with late hands. Great job staying in bounds as well. This is a really nice little series of plays. I think they had three of them in a row. I only showed two, but it really liked the rhythm that Carr was in right here. Decisive, accurate. That's a dot. Next one here, two point for the tie. Really nice job with Kamara up top coming down. Get the big guy up there setting the pick or the rub. And that's really nice job taking advantage of the Jaguars not being able to pass off that kind of man beater rub. Nice job from Carr. Again, wide open, great design. Anytime you're popping people open like this, to me, this is world-class design. It's not like, you know, tip of the spear type of stuff, but it's a nice call. So right here, there's going to be the pick. It's going to bring, and really he doesn't pick. He just runs his route. You come in here with the guy who's covering the back into the flat. So when we come out like this, it looks like they're trying to pass this thing off or the outside guy would take the flat. It just doesn't happen. And it's because of probably who they got out there as far as personnel and just the ability, how quickly they're able to do it with the motion, the stack, pop. Again, really nice ball from Carr. Make layups look easy right up on his face. Nice one. Again, just a good job here of battling back. You can say whatever you want, and I certainly feel like I have. But you got to respect the fact that they battled back and made this thing tight at the end. Next one here, third and short. We're going to come out here. Get our running back blowing the protection. Try to go make a creative play down the field and skip a stone. Okay, so we've got all sorts of issues. This is 5-0 protection. I know a great course that goes into significant detail with it. You can see Carr pointed out. The back just misses it. Then there's an opportunity potentially for a play down the field. We just miss it. So it's third and medium-ish. Okay, the scoreboard was wrong, so I didn't put it on here. But we've got a hitch right here to what I would consider your best player. I probably would throw it here without knowing what the read is. It looks like he's working up top. It looks like it's almost like slant, short post, hitch. You know, to me, just looking at access across the board, this looks like the easiest one. Okay, just draw up kind of where the corners are. Clear this thing off. Off, press, press. You know, hitches are for witches, but sometimes you gotta be a witch, man. Just take what's there. This is easy first down. Okay, so again, we don't know what the read is. Maybe their read is, look over here, 1,000% of your time, 12 is a decoy. What do I know? Okay, but what I do know is that the back ain't getting it done this game. That ain't it, bro. And then right here, you know, I think Carr in the past has had moments of creativity, but I don't think it's necessarily like a strength of his game, something that I would like lean on as like, oh, he's looking to get out and create to make stuff like this happen. He misses this throw by, you know, five-ish yards. And even if it's a good throw, the safety's probably going to blow it up. Watch the back. <laughs> okay, now look at where Carr's pointing. And I would almost guarantee that he is telling the back, hey, you have 23. This is 5-0 protection, 5-0 protection, universal football, five one-on-one -on -one blocks. Okay, almost all six-person protection would have the back on a duel. One to the most dangerous, two to three to scan both sides. This is an easy blitz, easy pickup, must block it. And again, you can tell that he's blocking. It's not a free release for the back. The back is not in the concept. He is in the protection unit. Watch his feet. Uh-huh. See that? Oh, what, a, what the fuck? What the what? I mean, I'm sorry I didn't hit you with the earmuffs, but come on, dog. That ain't it. It's a nice job by Carr just staying alive here. That's a terrible feeling, having a free runner through the A-gap. Get out of here. Double middle fingers. Get out. And then skip a stone.
Good night. Next one here, third and six. This is the dropped corner. Check out our guy, Gold Horn. Now he's become contagious, and the guy next to him has gone surrender Cobra as well. Little do they know what's going to happen on this play. Say it ain't so, Joe. Corner up top. Yeah, I mean, for me, I feel terrible for 87. That's kind of the end of the day. Really, it's a bummer. You don't wish, I honestly don't wish this on anyone. That is a terrible, terrible, terrible feeling. Now, they probably would have gone for it and not gotten it because they go for it here on fourth down and don't get it. But, I mean, you have to, we're going to obviously have already mentioned we're feeling shitty for 87. But you got to respect Carr for battling back here. It's been a struggle. It's a struggle to watch. He battled back. He threw a touchdown. That has to be caught. Okay, so you, I can say whatever I want, and I feel like I have, about this system, this quarterback, what's going on here. He threw it in his hands for a touchdown to tie the game, go to overtime, win it on a two-point conversion, and it is dropped. Okay? Respect for the battle. Not my flavor, but good on you. Last one here, the wide surrender Cobra. It's tough out there. It's over. We're going to throw another fade up top. This is really a turnover-worthy throw. The corner probably should catch this. They're anticipating back shoulders all day. You know, I, I think it's probably beyond the scope of this video to talk about just the, the decision to throw fades other than the fact that you say most teams are past this type of thinking. Most offensive play callers will not do this this many times. But where else would the ball go? Are they running both stick? Yeah, I mean, it's the same play we saw earlier. There's just not a lot of good options. This mirrored shit ain't for me, man. Fourth down in the game? Fourth down in the game, press, fade. Hits the corner in the hand, should be an interception. Kind of a fitting ending if I'm being serious about how I think this offense played all game. But you do have to respect the fact that they battled back and had this chance. But, I mean, <laughs> that is such a crummy decision, play, throw, all of the above. So that is a wrap. Derek Carr, the Saints, tough, tough performance. Really lots of mistakes all over the place. Kind of some just unique vibes too as far as the communication, the antics, really all of the above. It certainly feels out of sorts. It feels kind of like not the greatest work environment, if I'm being honest, offensively for high-quality football and quarterback play. We'll see what it looks like moving forward. Regardless of that, I think you do have to state it was pretty impressive that they even made this thing a game at the end because it really was a game and it really probably should have gone to a two-point conversion play for the win. Now, they probably would have thrown a fade and we probably would all be mad about them not converting that fade. But still, a chance all the way up into the end. I respect their ability to fight and make that thing close at the end. But my goodness, it's just not my type of ball. It's the antics, the kind of the footwork, the weird decision-making, the unnecessary movement, all of the above leads to what I would consider not the greatest ball to watch and break down consistently. We suffered through it today. Thank you so much for making it to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.